Ah, Veligion, and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi, and today we'll be spreading the joy of the Habsburgs to the world. If you're wondering how we got to own all of these lands within the first few years of the game via our multitude of vassals and subjects, then check the link in the description to the playlist or in the pinned comments. If you also want to see the mid to late game Austrian guide, then leave a like, 8,000 likes, and we'll do that guide for you, sir. So to celebrate the great von Hasburg dynasty we're gonna be attacking the Serbs and removing them before some silly Serbian boy with a gun does anything to jeopardize our dynasty that's called foreshadowing one very important aspect of the game when playing as the von Habsburgs or sorry Austria is keeping in mind the fact that you are gonna have to handle your diplo points properly that means that you want to make sure that you have enough diplo points to integrate vassals as well as do your ideas as soon as possible. Diplomatic ideas is extremely great as Austria at the very beginning since it lets you get more diplo relations, diplo reputation, as well as lower the impact on stability from diplomatic action. That means you can choose break without too much pain. Influence would be great as well at the very beginning. It's your choice. I prefer diplomatic since it gives me two extra diplomats that I really, really desperately need at the very start. So let's take a look at our diplomatic situation, guys. We just came out of a war with the uh, Turks here and we're gonna be attacking them in two years again for the rest of our vassals lands namely Bulgarian and uh, Byzantine lands thus pushing the Turks out of the Balkans forever we also have Diplo vassalized the Teutons and we will be feeding back their cores also Sadly, I cannot get the Polish-Lithuanian Union from my mission tree because Poland did not PU Lithuania, so I will only PU the Poles via my mission of conquest of Galicia. Another sad part is the fact that Charles died before he became king, so there's not going to be any Burgundian inheritance. In case you guys didn't know, the Burgundian inheritance is directly linked to the starting year of Burgundy, so if anything happens to that guy before he becomes the king, then there is not not gonna be any Burgundian inheritance. After a ridiculously short war, the last of the Serbians have been removed from the map. It's all for the greater good, guys. It is all for the greater good. Poland has integrated the Danzig nation and we will be attacking them now because we want to take all of these lands for our Teutonic ally, or better yet our Teutonic vassal, to integrate them afterwards. Should be a fairly easy war, but you know what? We're not even gonna call in our allies because we don't need to. We have enough troops to deal with this very fast. You know what's really weird in EU4? It's that there's no cannons in 1444. You do have cannons in the ships, right? And there were cannons around historically by the start date of EU4. So where are these cannons? Oh, I know. They're in my army here sieging down Poznan. Albeit, I did need to uh, research Tech 7 to get these, which is kind of a bummer. But still, can we get some cannons in 1444? PDX, please. Oh, beautiful. I like Bohemia. It's just like going in. Oh, yeah, Austria. I'll help you out. I'll, I'll take care of the rebels, Papa Austria. Papa Habsburg. Albeit, Papa Habsburg's probably also Brother Habsburg. If you know what I mean. 626 days to take over Plock. I guess Plock is definitely a super strong fort. Guys, I also want to show you something that I've shown in the Byzantine video that some of you didn't really understand, so I'm going to do my best to show once more, and hopefully this time you get it. If you return cores by this interaction here, there you go, I return all my cores to my vassal, I get 12 aggressive expansion, and it costs 65 war score. Instead, as you can see, I have all the provinces here given to the two Teutons. I go and I do this instead. That means directly give the lands to them. I get less aggressive expansion. It costs less war score and they still get lowered liberty desire from me doing this. Booyah, this war has been finished. Now we can focus on the Ottomans. Our troops are positioned and we are ready for this war. Let's go. We're going to set our war target to Filibe, which is fairly easy to take in the war. We're going to rush for it too and we're also going to rush for their capital of Constantinople as well as for the other forts they have in this area. Actually, let's take Selenik first before the one in the south of uh, Greece. The Ottomans likely have quite a strong army. There you go. Almost the same amount of troops as we do. But uh, despite that, it should be a fairly easy war since we do have a lot more vassal swarm here than they ever will be able to imagine. Not to mention, we do have the power of the Chin, which is 
and this is true, not something I just made up. We do a little bit of Carpet Siege 2 in the meanwhile, hopefully we manage to take Constantinople before the Ottoman army sees what's happening and starts to reinforce this area here. Oh, there they are. Guess I was wrong, they did see it. Let's try and have a fair fight here in that case. We're gonna bring in all the boys that we can. If it's a fight they want, it's a fight they're gonna get. Oh, looks like they don't want it anymore. Well, well, well. So the real uh, problemos, as they say in uh, German, hashtag don't really speak German, is the fact that we don't have a fleet that would allow us to cross into the Anatolian parts. But because we did leave them with the forts in the previous war, we do have a lot of war score that we can get from the Balkans. Plus, they did take over the nation of Crimea here as a march slash vassal that they just integrated. So we can take some more war score from that. Plus, we can also get into the Anatolian parts via the Caucasus region. Overall, it will take a little bit more time to uh, get the war score we need, but we still should be able to get it. Another thing to note is the fact that the Ottoman troops are insanely overpowered. The only thing that's keeping me afloat here is the fact that I got more morale because I have way more army tradition than they do since I've been fighting a lot more. Pretty much have been fighting since the start of the game, so there's that. Oh dear lord, it's the Reichstoffelerrattu. Yes, that is how you pronounce it, and it is also an awesome event. Idea cost minus five and diplo rep plus one until the end of the game. This is absolutely amazing, and it does make it worth losing one's stability. Also, we're about to wipe out another Ottoman army that is insanely not smart by attacking our province of Crimea. There you go. You got served, son. You got served. Oh, what are you guys doing here? Oh, dear lord. Hold up a sec. Looks to me like you boys need a little bit of re-education, sir. Go uh, bring our armies there just in case. Oh, snaps. They want to attack us. All right, we might lose this battle. They got a nine roll, bro. What? Yeah, we did lose this battle. It's okay, though. It's really not a big deal. We're gonna destroy this army afterwards with the other two armies we have adjacent here. We're gonna withdraw these boys over here, and we're gonna fight one more time. This time on our terms, not their terms. Whoa, overdose of event, everybody. <laughs> oh, God, our guy died. Oh, uh, can we get an F in the chat for the best, absolute best emperor ever? We did get some imperial authority out of it, so I guess it's not that... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> We got a 665? Bro, um, I'm really scared that we're gonna get a hunting event. Like, I'm really scared about that right now. And of course, to celebrate this, we got another minus one stab event, because why the hell not, right? Guys, if you want to see Rainer von Habsburg survive, leave a comment and tell me how many goats you sacrificed to the RNG lords for this. I'm not gonna click this event until I have to, though. Screw that, man. I'm gonna wait for that for a while. Let's also get another general, because we need one. That's actually pretty good. Five shock and two siege. Not bad. And yes, you saw that correctly. The Austrians have started building a fleet. Sadly, I do have to piece out the Ottomans. Not because I'm losing, but because I have the Imperial Authority to do my second reform. And I am pretty far behind with the reforms. Since I didn't plan initially to do anything with HRE, things have changed since then. And I am gonna piece them out. I'll just take the Bulgarian land so I can start integrating Bulgaria. Bulgaria, and I'll attack them again whenever the truce is finished. Should be a lot easier then since they lost a massive chunk of their lands. This also means we can seize land now. There you go, boys. Diplora plus one, Diplomats plus one. Absolutely amazing. I love being the Emperor so much, it's insane. There you go. One more Diplomat. This is so, so helpful that it is definitely worth piecing out the Ottomans early on. We're also going to start our Golden Age because it actually is really good to start this by the end of the 15th century. That means end of the 1400s. And we're going to take this time to reestablish our armies, reconsolidate, and rebuild our troops for the wars to come since we will be attacking a few other nations in a few moments. Guess what, boys? The empire is about to get a lot bigger. We just added a few provinces to the empire, which means that now we can attack Albania to make them join the empire, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. We might have some issues with the Venetian fleet since they probably have more ships than us, but hold up. Actually, no. We, <laughs> the Austrians, have the same amount of ships as the uh, Venetians. Okay, that is interesting. Oh, my dear lord, Popeus Maximus, you 
have just joined the greatest empire in the world. That is correct, the Habsburg Empire. You thought I was going to say the HRE, weren't you? Ah, yes, the famous uh, Austrian armada just got uh, naval superiority, which means we can actually send our troops over to Venice. Because why the schnitzel not, right? Exactly. Let's order a little bit of an artillery strike so we finish this war fast. And it just occurred to me that by adding Albania to the HRE, we just get a little bit of imperial authority. And instead of doing this, killing them would be a lot better, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Oh, second round between the Austrian and the Venetian fleet. Looks like we crushed them. Hell yeah. All right, let's uh, also peace out the Venetians here since we have pretty much everything we want. We're going to go for some cash, actually. And because I cannot add them to the Empire also since uh, they're a co-belligerated nation, not the main target, I am, however, going to do something else. I am going to release some of their nations. I'm not going to release too many because it does cost me Diplo points, but uh, this is enough nations to make an impact. We're also going to be attacking the Swiss because they are the Swiss and we nobody likes the Swiss. Let's let's be honest here. Why would you let a rich, not even German nation or at least not even fully German nation exist, right? And aside from all that stuff, to be fair, I'm attacking the Swiss because I want to vassalize them. They lost a lot of course here to a few other nations around and and I can easily feed that back and get all of Switzerland for a ton less aggressive expansion. In fact, only 37 aggressive expansion for all of Switzerland is literally nothing. Especially since they devved up burn 10 freaking times, man. Oh wow, guys. A Von Habsburg on the Burgundian throne. So even though the Burgundian inheritance didn't trigger, we still have a chance of getting this. We can claim the throne. But remember, kids, we have a truce with them, sadly. So we have to wait until the truce finishes before we can actually enforce on that throne claim fingers crossed fingers crossed oh hey we got the claims on uh poland now nice so when this truce is finished we can attack the poles and uh get all of that sweet sweet land also i am gonna fully annex the uh, knights they are amazing i love them nothing personal but i want this province for myself and similarly i'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, albanians here all of albania is now either ours or belongs to the ottomans we will peace out switzerland also we'll make them our vassal coalition wise is just Venice on so literally nobody important but we will of course wait for Salzburg to finish first hopefully this is gonna be the last take for the there you go they finish right now we're gonna go for trade power war reps and cancel a few alliances this should be more than enough boom and one more boom there you go noise now we can start improving relations with these guys is they're gonna be pretty pissed and you bad boys do not get an air whatever you absolutely do and the first target right now is gonna be the reconquest of uh, Switzerland's cores in uh, the three leagues speaking of the three leagues why are there only two provinces even though it's supposed to be the three leagues oh no 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 cannot have milanese pretenders going around like that these guys are gonna have to go berg what are you doing berg what are you why are you so aggressive man all i want in the empire is peace eternal can i not have that alfada bacabra what no that's not harry potter you're dead three leagues all right, now that we finished with that, we can start annexing people here. We're going to go with these guys first. Five years to annex them, but if we do uh, this, this, and uh, uh, this, then it's going to go from uh, five years to four years. That's actually amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And they're not even pissed at us. Look at this. 3% liberty desire, boys. 3%. We're going to do another nation at the same time, but we're not going to do it yet. We're going to wait for a little bit. Likely, it's going to be Valencia, by the way. Well, it's actually happening. We're close. Claiming the throne of Burgundy and with the CB we will absolutely wreck them once our truce is over in a couple of months here. Truce is over, time to declare Zever. We are getting minus one stab but it's really not much of a big deal that we're getting this one stab here. Let's go, let's take over the nation of Burgundy, make it our beloved and I mean beloved personal union. It is a sad affair that we didn't get the inheritance. That would have actually meant that uh, we would to Burgundy instantly via the event. Now we're gonna have to wait for 50 years before we actually integrate Burgundy. We did manage to integrate Bulgaria though. That's a small success right there, boys. That is a small success. Let's make all of these full cores and welcome the Bulgarian people into the greatest land there is. You know what? This feels just too easy. I'm gonna do something else. I am gonna be attacking the Poles at the same time. Their ally Brandenburg would join in. Okay, in that case, I'm gonna call Brandenburg in 
my war, which means they cannot join into uh, Poland's war. So that is what we like to call a pro gamer move. I feel like we can definitely turn this game into a world conquest. What do you guys think? Should we turn this into a world conquest? All right, let's peace out Verdun here. We don't need anything from them, just white pieces, fine. And Huland as well. Where are you from? I'm from the Netherlands. What is that? Is that Holland? Yes. It's weird how everybody in the world knows the Netherlands people as people from Holland. The word for the Netherlands in Romanian is Holanda. Think about that for a second, every other Netherlands state. Think about it. We're going to be barraging this fort here and we're going to take this fort back as well. Most likely what I'm going to go for in uh, this peace deal is going to be this region here. Most of this region anyway, as much as I can. And one province here so I can release uh, Ruthenia and feed it back all of its amazing juicy cores. Uh, this seems to be quite fine. I'm not going to take Krakow simply because it's too much uh, war score and I want to take the money too. Aggressive expansion wise, likely nobody. There you go. Absolutely nobody cares about this area. And we will increase our lands by quite a bit. Not to mention, this is actually some of the best lands in the game. Not just for devving up, but also economically speaking. And it offers a lot of manpower too. It looks like the Poles have caved in and we'll be taking all of this stuff now no coalition whatsoever of course not that we we even care about a coalition but just saying gonna be concentrating all of this as well and all of this before we core it up do the same thing here and we will be releasing here the uh nation of galicia volhynia in a few seconds first we have to deal with the burgundians and i guess you could say that the burgundians are burgon Oh, such a German joke. Oh my God, much funny, much funny. This guy cannot believe. All right, we finally established our dominion over Burgundy. Finally, should have been done a long time ago, but hey, this game is massively RNG. Some runs are amazing. Some runs are so-so. It really depends on your luck. Now we can also release Galicia Volhynia, there at Yago, and in the next war we will be feeding all of this to our vassal. We're gonna attack Lithuania as well at some point and take their cores also. More importantly, we're gonna be attacking the Ottomans once more since the truce is pretty much finished and we can get a few more cores from them now. We have started integrating both Valachia and the Teutons because we do need the extra Diplo relation slots and we will be attacking the uh, Ottomans now for the reconquest of Constantinople in this war. It's gonna be a tough war especially since Tunis is gonna be in this and that means we're gonna struggle a little bit with our navies to actually get supremacy even though we actually recruited a lot more galleys hold on another second Provence got all the cores on this oh my god this is absolutely golden this is golden guys I am gonna vassalize Provence and I'm gonna be able to use Provence's cores to get all of the South Italian part this is absolutely brilliant anyway that's gonna be for the future for the time being let's just declare this war set constantinople and let's go boys i feel like this run is going to be a lot better than i was actually expecting it to be at the uh, beginning if we manage to destroy the ottoman fleet then by the time that the uh, tunisian fleet arrives we should be okay barrage everything so we siege this a lot faster and having naval superiority here is going to be so much better than the last war oh bavaria you insulted me why would you do this i thought i was your friend my disappointment is immeasurable also we are about to get the third re form but guess what we just had uh the protestant spawn that is correct bremen is the first protestant uh nation here it's not cool i'm not happy with this and i will have to deal with it the best way to deal with the situation is actually to uh get this province from the danes and use my influence in the north to enforce the uh catholic faith however until i do that i gotta finish this war with the ottomans first and it looks like i might not actually have naval superiority ah that's why they got heavy ships guys Keep in mind, even in this patch, heavies always win compared to uh, galleys, no matter what people say. Ah, yes, the mighty Habsburg armies of everybody in Europe sieging down shit here whilst the Ottomans are actually screwing me over in the Balkans since I trusted my many, many subjects to defend this area whilst I take down the Anatolian parts. Oh, God. So, literally, you know, reverse card once again, guys, once again. So, I'm gonna siege this down, then I have to. To go back and siege this again jesus it was not an easy war i'll be honest about that the ottoman army in the beginning of the 1500s is the strongest pip wise and they have quite a bit of morale as well but we did eventually win the wars we had to recruit the independent company however so we did go a little bit over our treasury points we're gonna have to pay those back so we're gonna take some money from the ottomans plus we're taking all the balkan provinces they have and a few of the anatolian parts actually i want to take this small province 
here too so they literally are out of the balkans let's go that is it for this war and we can also start integrating the byzantines now as well as we can obviously concentrate these lands same here and same in kangiri but most importantly we will release the nation of eretna which is a beast of a nation since in the next war it's going to feed us half of the ottoman lands amazing we're also going to be allying and vassalizing karaman diplomatically since karaman has the other half of the ottoman cores so yeah essentially we're going to be destroying the ottomans in the next war these rebels should go back to the ottoman lands beautiful bring our armies back home and re oh i forgot they still have one province here okay i guess the ottomans are not out of the balkans although technically this is not the balkans and before we disband the uh, independent company we're going to use them in another war shortly if you were guessing that i'm going to attack lithuania you were absolutely correct i am in fact going to attack him right now let's even call in brandenburg into this we're going to go for our cores that belong to our beloved and amazing vassal namely galicia volhynia here so we're going to give them back all their cores maybe even take a few extra provinces from the lithuanians haven't decided yet probably just some cash though i'm also doing this so i can uh, make the most out of my uh, mercenary company before i actually disband them at the end of the war i'm only gonna go for this from the lithuanians i just wanted a few provinces from them the cores of my uh, vassal plus a couple more provinces just because we can take them and we can also do our next reform here that gives us yearly tax incomes 26 because of the amount of princes that we have next up is the perpetual diet because i do need to go on a diet yes i am a little bit chubby son the ottomans are no longer a valid rival either because we absolutely pushed them into the ground and apparently we only have the english as a valid rival why oh they still have the in the french lands wow okay that's very surprising fair enough let's go back to our main lands here 1520s we got our idea sets filled up if we go to the player map mode we have almost 25 to 30 percent of europe a strong economic base with four separate gold mines pretty much all of the european gold mines within our territory except the one in uh, castile for the time being and we are trying to get a castilian pu also by um, getting a habsburg on the throne of castile so if you want to see all of that and you want to see how we turn this in the 1500s from a nation this size to a nation that is literally all of europe and parts of india by 1600s then leave a like 8,000 likes and i'll make sure you guys see that so i'll see you all in the next video i also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members as well as my twitch subscribers thank you so much guys for all the support i wouldn't be able to make these videos without you